Okay, good morning. We are starting Objective 29. We are going to work on graphing exponential and logarithmic functions. We're going to write exponential functions as logarithmic functions and vice versa. We may or may not get to part two um, today, um, but we'll at least work on part one. Okay, so the definition of an exponential function is a function where the base is a constant and the exponent is a variable. This should say is a variable. The parent function is written in the form y equals b to the x. So I want you to repeat after me. When x is the exponent, the function's exponential. Say it again. When x is the exponent, the function's exponential. One more time. When x is the exponent, the function is exponential. Okay, so that's how you're going to recognize what kind of function. When x is the exponent, the function is exponential. And we know by our penny trick, the shape of it is going to start out slow. And then all of a sudden, it's going to skyrocket. Okay, remember when we did, I'll pay you a penny a day and I'll double it each day. It started out really slow and we weren't making very much at all. And then all of a sudden, it skyrocketed. Okay, we would call this a growth. Okay, if you can also see an exponential where it plummets first and then it levels out. Okay, either way, it's going to level out horizontally. So if I looked at this, it's going to level out horizontally here and it's going to level out horizontally there. Okay? We would call this on the right side a decay. Oops. Struggle in here for a minute. Let's see if I can get it to right. There we go. A decay. Okay, and you will know that way, you know, there's no question about, like, Ms. Corns, why sometimes does my graph seem to, you know, level out and then all of a sudden, you know, skyrocket up, which we would call a growth, and then why does it sometimes, um, you know, reverse and go the other way? So one is called a decay and one is called a growth. You will know a growth because the base is going to be greater than one, okay? So when you... Um, Look at your actual function. If the base, the base of the power, is greater than 1, it'll be a growth. If um, the base is um, less than 1, it'll be a decay. Okay, so for example, like if you had y equals 1 fourth to the x, that would be a decay. Or on this side, if you had y equals 3 to the x, that would be a growth because the base is greater than 1 for growth and it's less than 1 for decay. Okay, I'm not going to worry about these right now so you don't need to draw those. Alright, so let's look at our first example. And we're going to graph this. So I hope you have your calculator with you. What we're going to do is we're going to put this into our calculator. y equals 3 raised to the x. And I'm going to graph I'm going to go to my table and I'm going to get some points. So I've got some good points here at 0, 1, 1, 3, over 2 and up 9. You're going to need to do some decimals because if all I did was that, that to me looks almost like a line. It could even um, be like a half of a parabola. So to get the full shape of the graph, you need to make sure you get some decimals. So negative 1.3.3 3 would be in between 0 and 1, and then negative 2.1, and then you'll notice as you keep going it gets closer and closer and closer until you see that E message. Like I think if you go to negative 7, you'll see 4.6 E to the negative 4. And I told you earlier this year, when you see something like this, when you see an E message, that's what our calculator is using for zero. Okay. Now my question is, is 
does this line does this line actually touch zero? I mean, our calculator gives us these E message, so that basically means zero, 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 zero. But is it actually touching zero? And here's what I'm going to tell you: No, it does not touch zero. It gets so close to zero that we think it's going to touch, but it doesn't ever touch. And we're going to call that an asymptote. Okay? So this has a horizontal asymptote. So we're going to use our domain and range. Okay. I asked the other day, why won't these create holes? And I'm going to tell you, because holes are created when something cancels. Well, we don't have a fraction here. There's no fraction in our function, so nothing's going to cancel. So therefore, we will not have holes on these. Okay, so we do have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Don't forget if it's horizontal, then, you know, we would think use the x because it's horizontal, but it's actually the opposite. You use y. y equals zero. Okay, do we have a vertical asymptote? Is there an asymptote that goes up and down? Like, is he approaching a, a vertical asymptote? I'm going to tell you no. Okay, so when you draw this, you need to make sure that you draw it so it keeps going out and out and out. Okay, it does not, exponential functions do not have vertical asymptotes. Okay, so I'm going to say none. They only have horizontals. Exponential has horizontal asymptotes. Vertical has, um, logarithmics have vertical asymptotes because they're the opposite of an exponential. They're inverses. Um, I once had a student that couldn't remember, and a lot of my students have trouble remembering which ones have which. And they always said, he came up with this statement, he said a log, and that's what we're going to use for a, um, a logarithmic here in a minute. We're going to, a log is a tree. Everybody agree with that? A log is a tree. And a tree runs which way? A tree runs up and down. So logs have vertical asymptotes. And therefore, exponentials have horizontal asymptotes. I don't know if that helps you remember that. A log is a tree, and a tree runs up and down, so logs have vertical asymptotes. Okay, so let's talk about domain and range for this. Domain goes left and right. How far left does he go? He's going to, if we look at this arrow right here, he's going to negative infinity. So he goes right. And if I look over here, how far right is he going? Everybody says, Ms. Corns, he's not going right, he's going up. Well, he's going northeast. So he is going right. Okay. Um, so he goes right forever. So our domain's going to be all real numbers. Our range is a little bit different. We go forever up. So if you look up here, we go forever up. But we don't go forever down. If I look how far down I'm going, I'm only going to right here. This is where I'm heading. Okay, right there to that asymptote. So we're going to say our range is all y's such that y is greater than zero. Would it be equal to zero? No. It's not going to be equal to zero because it's an asymptote. It doesn't ever touch zero. It's approaching zero. It's getting really, 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 really close, but it doesn't touch zero. So it'd be greater than zero, not equal to. So let's go to our next one. So we're going to put this in our calculators. We're going to put in 2 raised to the x plus 1. And we're going to go to our table. And I'm going to get some good points here. So I see 0, 2. I see 1, 3. See negative one, one point five. Um, I see two five. So again, you know, you're gonna have to get some decimals in here. So this is one point five. Getting closer and closer and closer. And so it's gonna look something like this. Okay. So my question is. What number is it getting really, really close to? What number am I approaching right here? And we are approaching this line right here. So that is our horizontal asymptote. 
So that is at y equals 1. Okay, how about my vertical asymptote? I'm going to say none, because again, exponentials have horizontal asymptotes, logarithmic, so log is a tree, and a tree goes up and down. Okay, so if we look at our domain and our range, how far left? Forever. How far right? Forever. So domain is all reals. In range, how far up? We go up forever. How far down? We're going to right there to 1. So we need to make a statement, and we would say all y's such that y is greater than 1. And it's not equal to because it doesn't ever touch it. Even though, like, if you look in your calculator and you look in your table and you get up to, I uh, guess, go where x is negative 15, it actually says 1 in the calculator. Like, it says negative 15, 1, negative 16, 1, negative 18, 1 negative 19, 1, negative 21, but is it actually touching 1? No, it gets really, really close to 1, but it doesn't ever quite touch it. The calculator is just rounding it off to 1, but it doesn't actually touch 1. Okay, um, let's actually add a little bit to this. So plus 2, actually let's do plus 1, plus 1, and then minus 2 here. So this will be all together up top. So let's do 1 third raised to the, make sure you put this all up in the exponent, x minus 1, and then use your arrow down to do the minus 2. Okay, and this is going to be a decay. How do I know this is a decay? Because my base, negative, or one-third, is less than one. And then I'm going to graph it. So if you need to hit pause, you can hit pause and get some good points. Zero, one. One, negative one. Negative two. Or two, negative one point six. 1.8, so it's getting awfully close to right here. Alright, so see if you, I, I encourage you, hit the pause button, see if you can figure these out. Okay, because this is the last one before we go to logarithms. Okay, alright. Um, Horizontal asymptote. Where am I approaching? This line is approaching at y equals negative 2. I'm down 2 on the y axis. Okay. There are no verticals. My domain is going to be all real. And I'm sure somebody's wanting to ask the question is it always going to be all real for domain? Yes. It's always going to be all real. Now, knowing what you know. If we know that we're getting ready to do logarithmics, and logarithmics are the inverse of exponentials, what do we know about logarithmics? We know that logarithmics, their range will be all reals because it's going to be the opposite. If on exponentials the domain is all reals, then on logarithmics the range will be all reals. Okay. Here, my range, how far up? Forever. How far down? We're going to negative 2, so we would say all y such that y is greater than negative 2. And the question always is, is Ms. Corns, are you that good? Are, can you just look at the equation and tell me where the horizontal asymptote is going to be? And yes, like if you look, we know that this is, if I'm minus 2 on the end of the function, what does that mean? It means it's going to shift down 2. So that tells me where my horizontal asymptote is. Like if you look at this one right here. I know my shift, I'm going up 1, up 1 on the graph. So that's where my horizontal asymptote. And you can use your horizontal asymptote to help you with your range, okay? Um, same thing here. Where's my shift? I'm at plus 0 because there's nothing out there. So that gives me my horizontal asymptote. Okay, so let's go to logarithm. The inverse of an exponential function is a logarithmic function. So we're not going to do a lot 
with logarithmics. Uh, we're not going to solve them. We're not going to evaluate them. Basically, here's what I need you to understand in Algebra 2. I need you to understand what the graph looks like. I need you to be able to determine the domain, the range, and the asymptotes. And I need you to understand that exponentials and logarithmics are inverses of each other. Okay? So when you see a log, it'll be in the form of this. The log base b of x is equal to y. If and only if b to the y is equal to x. So here's what I want you to understand. Normally, I give you like 2 to the third, and we figure out what x is. When we say, so I give you the base, and I give you the exponent, and I say 2 to the third would be equal to 8. What you do with logs that are the opposite, so instead of looking for the outcome, like we normally do, it's when you're searching for the exponents. So if I reverse this, this would be the log of base 2, so the base is going to be the same, of 8 is what exponent. So I'm searching for the y. Notice I'm searching for the y. And so I could say 2 to what power is 8. And so that helps you find that the answer here would be 3. So again, Everybody says, well, when do you use logs? Well, when you're searching for exponents. When you're trying to solve an exponent, you set up a logarithmic equation. Okay? When you're searching for an exponent, it helps you find the exponent because that's what you're solving for right there. Okay? So, here's what I'm going to tell you. First of all, what base is on this one? There is no base written. But there is a base understood. When there is no base, it's understood to be base 10. Okay? What I'm going to tell you in your calculator is if it's just a plain log, then you can use your log key. Okay? You can use just the log key that you're, it's right beside the number 7 underneath the x squared on your calculator. Okay? So we're just going to put in y equals, and we're going to put in 3 log of x plus 1. And the calculator understands that to be base 10. Okay? So that's what it will use. So 3 log x, you don't have to put in the base 10. 3 log x plus 1. Now I'm going to graph it. I'm going to get some good points. <coughs> so I've got 1, 1. I've got 2, 1.9, I've got 3, 2.4, I've got 4, 2.8, I've got 5, 3.09, so it's going to go up like that. My question is, is that actually what it does? And I'm going to tell you no. Okay, so if you graph it like this, I don't mean to be ugly, but you're not finished. The calculator will only give you a part of the graph. Okay, you've got to know better. So here's what I want you to understand. What did I tell you as far as asymptotes? I told you that horizontals have, um, exponentials have horizontals, logarithmics will have verticals. So we know that there are no horizontals. Okay, so this line right here is not approaching anything. He's just going up and up and up and up. Okay, but vertically, if you look at your very first error, and I have an error at zero. There's an error right there. That is your vertical asymptote right there. And by definition of a vertical asymptote, this line, you're going to have to draw it. It's approaching it. That's what an asymptote is. The, the function's approaching it. So he doesn't stop right there at 1, 1. Um, he actually is approaching, and he's getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer, but he doesn't ever quite get there. And it makes sense why there's an error, because what kind of line is a vertical line? It's an undefined line, so it will give us an error in the calculator. So you see a lot of errors, but I'm going to tell you the very first one you see, that's your vertical asymptote. So we know we have a vertical asymptote at... If it's a vertical line, we think y, but it's really x equals 1. Uh, not 1, 0. Sorry about that. x equals 0. So let's talk domain and range. So 
how far left and right? So how far right forever? How far to the left? If I'm going to the left, how far left do we go? And we go to zero, zero on the x. So we need to say all x such that x is greater than zero because that's where your asymptote is. So you can use your vertical asymptote to help you with your range. I mean, help you with your domain, okay? And then your range, remember, if we go back, Remember here, our domains were all real. We were all real right here. We were all real right here. And if logarithmics are the opposite of that, that means this is going to be all reals. Because it's forever up and forever down. Okay? So we've got another just plain log, base 10. So we can use the log key. 2 log and then x minus 2. Okay, and I'm going to get some good points. So I have 3, 0 out of 4.6. Whoops. Make sure I got some. Struggling here. 6, 5.9, 1.2, and it keeps going up, and you'll see 1.5, so it's going like this, okay, make sure you draw it up, make sure you don't draw it like this, don't draw it leveling out, because then that's going to make you feel like it has a horizontal asymptote, and it doesn't, so make sure you draw it going up, okay, and I'm going to tell you, if you draw it just like that, I don't mean to be ugly, but I'm going to count that wrong because you've only drawn half of the function. This has a vertical asymptote at 2 because it's my first error that I see in the calculator. Okay? And so I've got to approach this. So I've got to draw it to where it's getting closer and closer and closer, but it doesn't quite touch it. Okay? So, HA, VA, domain, and range. I encourage you to pause it and see what you could fill out. So, horizontal, is it approaching anything horizontally? And that is a no. Okay. Vertical, yes. We know we have a vertical at x equals 2. Domain, forever right, but only to... 2 going to the left. So we would say all x such that x is greater than 2. And we say greater because it's on the right side. Okay, it's on the positive side of 2, so greater. And our range, how far up? Forever. And how far down? Forever. So that would be all real. Alright, last one we're going to do for today. And this one's different because it has a base. And you can't just use that log key. So what I want to tell you to do is um, if you press math on your calculator, if you go to y equals, well, actually, you'll have to go to y equals first and put in the 1 half. And then if you will press, to get the log base, if you'll go math and then press the green button alpha and then press math again, math, alpha, math you should see the log base come up into your calculator and then you just fill it in. So math, alpha, math. So make sure you put parentheses around one-fourth and fill in the x minus three. Now if you want to use the log base key at all, the math, alpha, math, um, all the time, that'd be fine. What would you have to put in for like this one? You would actually have to enter in base of ten. So, you know, you feel free to use that, math, alpha, math. Just make sure if it's just a plain log, it's understood to be base 10. Otherwise, it'll give you a base to use, okay? So if I go to my table and I graph, I see my first error. My first error is at 3, so I'm going to go ahead and draw that. That's my vertical asymptote. And I know this, everybody says, Ms. Corns, can you just look at the equation? Yes, I do, because it's what makes a log is undefined at zero. 
So what can you plug in for x that would make this whole part 0? And it's 3. So I use that. I use it, and it's your horizontal shift. If it's x minus 3 on the inside, we think it shifts left 3 because it's minus 3, but it actually is shifting to the right 3. Okay? So you can use that. I've got 4, 0. I've got 5, negative 0.25. I've got 6, negative 0.3. negative 0.5, negative 0.58, so it's going down like so, okay? Do make sure, don't level it out, it is going down, so make sure you draw it going down. And again, I don't mean to be ugly, but if you leave it like that, I will count it wrong. If you have to draw it, it is approaching this vertical asymptote, okay? So HA, VA, domain, range. HA is going to be none. Our vertical is at x equals 3. Our domain is all x's so that x is greater than 3. Again, you can use your vertical asymptote to help you with your domain. And your range is going to be all wheels because it's forever up and forever down. Okay, we're finished. We're finished.